climate. It's always equal to one of them. So unlike series connected cells, where the total EMF is equal to the sum of all of them, for cells connected in series, E, the EMF, when you use both meter to measure, you have V equal to E1 plus E2 plus E3. The same arrangement when connected in parallel. This time, what the volt meter measures is only equal to one of them, especially if all the source EMFs are the same. So if E1 E1 equals E2 is equal to E3, then the voltage, okay, the voltmeter will read just one of them. So if 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, the voltmeter reads 1.5. Uh, that is what happens for um, cells or batteries connected in power. Please, any question? Please, any question? All right. So if you have this arrangement, and the question asks that you find when it is, this is connected to a battery. Once there is an external resistor R, okay, the voltage, when you connect a voltmeter across this, what the voltmeter measures is always less than the EMF, meaning something that's lost. So the EMF must be equal to the voltage drop across the Resistor terminal voltage plus the lost volts. Plus the lost volts. Okay. Now, what happens is that this has an internal resistance R, and so I, I, of course, will be equal to R plus. R filter or summation R. Okay. Now, how do we find the total? If if the external resistor is only one, then R will be just this. If you have a number of them, then you have to find the effective or total resistance as we've been doing. Now for R. The story would change because for R, when the, when the cells are in series, we realize that summation of R is equal to NR. Gerard, mute yourself. Mary Sapo. Ah, ah, K. It's been a while. Mute yourself. So, I'll call you after the class. What about the cell? You see, each of the cells has an internal resistance R, and they are connected in parallel, meaning you need to treat the total R as as if you have resistance connected in power. So if this is R1, this is R2, then one on R, RT will certainly be equal to one over R1 plus one over R2. So that you have one on RT 
equal to LCM, R1 times R2. In effect, we know this will be equal to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. That will be the value of RT. So what I'm saying is that if you have two cells, two or more cells, but their cells are connected in parallel, okay, EMF would always be equal to one of them, okay? But the total internal resistance must be treated as if as resistors in series. Resistors in series. So in this case, then we we'll have summation of R subscript T. Therefore, I, the current I, will be equal to E over R plus. Okay, then the R1. R2 over R1 plus R2. Since this will be the total R. Please, are you with me? Yes, are you with please. me? Before we look at a real value experience. Now, if, if the internal resistance are the same, R1 is equal to R2, then this is what will happen. If R1 is equal to R2, then R total will be equal to R squared over 2R. Okay? R1 is equal to R2 and they are all equal to R. So R1 times R2 will be R squared over R plus R, 2R. So in effect, this will be equal to R divided by 2. So in this case, our RT would actually be equal to R over 2. Meaning that generally, if you have n number of cells, for n number of cells, connected in power for n number n number of cells connected in power the current i is equal to e over R plus R on N. Because here, because we have two, that is why this is R is divided by two. So if we have N and the magnitude, the internal resistances are the same then I will be equal to E over R plus R on N. Example, we have three cells. This is E1, 1.5 volts. E2, 1.5 volts. Then 0.3. Each with internal resistance, same, same R. The external resistor connected to this is um, maybe 4 ohm. Calculate for the current. Flowing through the circuits. Yes. 
Give it a try. This is the arrangement we have. In 1.5, each of the EMS, 1.5, 1.5, we have two of them with equal value of internal resistance. We have to calculate for the current flowing through the circuit. So let's see what you can do. Miss Bedia, I can't really see the diagram very well. There's oh. some light shining. Uh, let me turn the light off. There you are. Okay, wow. Thank you. What a wow. Finished. Okay, time isn't on our side, so let's look at it. All right, so. For cells connected in firing, the EMF is always equal to one of them. Okay. So, the R. R will always be equal to 0 0.3 times another 0 0.3 over 2 times 0 0.3. So this is 0 0.3 on 2 will be the value of R. All right. And what is 0 0.3 on 2? No Therefore, the current I would be equal to one point five divided by four plus zero point one five. So 1.5 over 4.15. And what's the answer? What's the answer? 
zero point three six one four ampere. So it's a bit uh, difficult, then you just need to understand. Okay, just as I said for the series one, this can also be the external resistor can also be given in that form of in that weird form to see if you can quickly think through and then apply. And then connect. Connect this to the circuits. Whatever they do, the value is the same. So if it is designed as this R1, R2, R3, the whole trick here is to find the equivalent resistance, R equivalent of the whole thing. This, this, blah, 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 and the value is the same. Please, are we okay? Yes, are we okay? So, that is it. Electrical power. Last time, I made you understand that when we talk about electrical power, we are talking about the work done in converting electrical energy to any form of energy within a given time. So if an electrical device is rated, the rating of the electrical device is maybe 50 watts. And this is a ball. A ball is rated 50 watts. What it simply means is that this is the work done in converting power is work over time or energy, energy over time. Okay, so it is the work done in converting maybe. And the SI unit of power is the watts. So this power rating of 50 watts implies that we have 50 watts is joule per second. But the derived unit or the basic unit is joule per second from work over time or energy over time. Work or energy is in joules. Time is in seconds. So the unit joule per second is what my friend what was earned with. And so the unit simply became, the SI unit became what? So if a device is rated 50 watts, this implies that we are talking about 50 joule of work done or energy consumed within one second. So if I have an electric ball and it is rated 50 watts, then it means that electric ball, within one second, 50 joules of electrical energy, okay, is converted to light energy. Ball converts electrical energy to light energy. So 50 joules of electrical energy is converted to light energy every second. If I have an electric guitar and it is rated 1,200 watts, what it means is that 1,200 of 1,200 joules of electric energy, electric energy is converted to heat energy, heat energy every second, every second. So this 
This is the reason why when you are using electric heater, it consumes a lot of energy because it converts a lot of electrical energy to heat within a short, within one second. Okay, so since power is equal to work done over time, the work done in moving a unit charge from one point to another point is actually given by the magnitude of the charge by the potential difference V. V therefore is equal to the work done is this Q V over T. Now look at current, electric current I is equal to charge flow over time. So it means that if you look at the relation for power, Q over T part times V, this part is I. This part is this. The reason for which the formula for power is equal to I times V. This is how we obtain the relation or the formula for calculating power. Then, other formula or relations are derived using Ohm's law, I am. So, if you want to make I a subject and put it in them, you could get the other relation for electric power. All right. Yes, please. If you want to determine the energy consumed, electrical energy consumed, since power is equal to energy, energy or what? Energy over time. When you make E the subject, you have P T for electrical energy consumed. So when you want to calculate the electrical energy consumed within a given time, it is the power rating of the device times the time used. So my bulb is rated 50 watts. I use this bulb for one week. One week is equal to, I convert one week to seconds. You let's take um, one day. Okay, one day is equal to 24 hours. One day, one hour, one hour. So 3,000, one hour is how many minutes? 60. So 3,600 seconds. Okay, so when I multiply this by this, Okay, then I have the amount of energy consumed. Don't forget, this is 50 joule over, over one second. So it means 3,600 seconds. Then the energy will be expressed in joules because the seconds will cancel each other. Sometimes the unit of electrical energy is also expressed in kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour. In terms of kilowatt hour, then I must express the power which is in watts, okay, in terms of kilowatts. Okay. So 50 watts um, expressed in 
kilowatt is equal to dividing this by 1000. Okay, so this is equal to 0 0.05 kilowatts times I express this in hours. This is one hour. So my total energy consumed will be 0 0.05 kilowatts hour. This is how to calculate for energy consumed. And sometimes cost of electricity, how do we price electricity? If I have a ball, how do we price electricity? If I have a ball whose power rating is 50, 50 watts, and I use it for one hour. How do I price it? Now, ECG, ECG has a consumption rate for one hour. And they decide that if you use the power for one hour, and it's equal to maybe 0 0.05 Ghana cities. For one hour usage of electrical energy. So if I want to cost it, then I use this for one week. Let's say for one week, one week as three days, or to make it simple, one day. I use the work for one day. This is the power. Now, the cost is expressed in kilowatt one kilowatt hour consumption is equal to zero point zero five. So it means. What is the energy consumed? The power is 50. 0 0.05 kilowatts times the time used. I use it for one day. One day is equal to 24 hours. I use that for one day, and one day is equal to 24 hours. Then I multiply 0 0.05 by 24 to give me the energy consumed in kilowatt hour. So within the one day, this is the energy consumed. And since one kilowatt hour of energy, Cost this. Please multiply this for me. Multiply 0 0.05 by 24. 1.2. Hello. What's the value? 1.2. 1.2. So the energy consumed is 1.2 kilowatts. Now, if every one kilowatt hour consumed would cost me this, then my bill, the charge, or what I must pay for this amount of energy consumed will be 1.2 times 0 0.05. 1.2 times 0 0.05. Yes. Zero point zero six. Zero point zero six. So this is sixty, yes. Zero point zero six. So I'll pay 
0 0.06 Ghana cities for using or consuming 1.2 kilowatt hour. So that is how to, I mean, charge or the tariffing. They have, so in a question, they will give you that maybe one kilowatt hour is equal to this, or, or one, one watt second is equal to this. Either it is expressed in watts and seconds, so it depends on what they give you. And then, so if, if you use maybe you boil heater, cook a uh, uh, washing machine, you and then you are giving different duration for the usage of them. You pick each and every one and calculate. When you finish, you calculate their individual cost and add them. Please, are you okay? Are we okay? Yes, please. Yes, please. It's, it isn't so difficult. It isn't so difficult. So this is for my 50 watts more. Using it for one day. If I have heater, if I have an electric heater, and then it's rating, maybe 1,000 watts, and I also use it for one day, then maybe rice cooker. Okay, so it's about more 1,000 watts heater for one day. Then, this is heater. Then rice cooker. Maybe it's written as 700 watts for the same day. So if I have a heater, this, use it for one day. Heater this, one day. Rice cooker this, for one day. Okay. Calculate for the total cost. Total cost. Cost in using the devices. Electric bulb is giving me this. Okay, bill. Then beta. And the electric rating is the same. One kilowatt hour consumed is equal to zero point five. So the energy thousand watts is equal to one kilowatt. And I'm doing it expressing it in kilowatt because of what I was given. So one kilowatts times one day, 24 hours. Okay. One day, 24 hours. This is 24 kilowatts hour. Therefore, the cost will be 24 times 0 0.05. Twenty four times zero point zero five or twenty four over five, twenty four times five divided by hundred. Please let's hurry up with the calculation. Another one, Rachel. One point two. One point two. So this would cost me. 1.2 Ghana cities for using it for one day. Then I come to the cooker, rice cooker. Okay. 0 0.7 
times 24, 24 hours, times 0 0.05. That will be the cost. And then what's the cost? P zero point eight four Ghana cities. So this is zero point eight four Ghana cities. So the total cost of using this, all the three um, appliances, 0 0.06 plus 1.2 plus 0 0.84. This is one point two point one. So, if this is the rate, then within a day, the total cost of using this, this, this blah 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 blah, would cost me two Ghana CDs and ten pesos. Please, nobody should say that this is cheap. And I have for this is me. Yeah, I have just created a tariff. My bobby trim in a memo value. Okay. But this is how to I mean bill or charge for electrical energy consumed. I'll look for sample questions and throw it to your faces. All right. All right. Okay, so the next area I want us to be doing would be converting a meter, a galvanometer. In fact, a galvanometer is a device that is used to measure small current, small voltage, it is, it is used for dual purpose, for measuring small current or small voltage, and also used to determine the directional flow of current. Okay. If you have a galvanometer in the lab, has the symbol capital G, so those moving coil meters with capital G on top are written in front of it. It's a galvanometer. So you see for a galvanometer, you see for a meter, you see capital A, both meter. Capital B, galvanometer, capital G. These are all moving coil meters. Moving coil meters. They operate on the principle of electromagnetism. Moving coil meters. They operate. on the principle of electromagnetism. And ele electromagnetism is a artificial way of making magnets. Okay. We have permanent magnets. Permanent magnets are the ones we have in the lab, that metallic rod one. They are called permanent because the magnetic effect is always there. And they are also 
So, I mean, permanent magnets are like this. We have it in the lab. Rectangular metallic okay shape thing. With north and south pole at the ends. These are called permanent magnets because the magnetic effect would always be there. So long as you are not heating this or hammering this, bam, 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 bam. When you heat it, when you hammer it consistently, it will lose its magnetic property. But so long as you are not doing any of this, not heating, not hammering, the magnetic effect around it would always be there. The pole, the north and south pole, as indicated, would always be there. The reason for which we call this as permanent magnets, it is always there, permanent. If we don't want to make permanent magnets, we can also create temporal magnets. And that's the principle of electromagnetism. Temporal magnets. How do we make temporal magnets? If you have a wire and you pass current through it, whether direct current or alternating current, the wire automatically also has magnetic field around it. That is why electric wires that carry large amount of current, when it drops, when when during rainfall or heavy storm, when it drops on the ground, we are people are advised not to, people and animals are advised not to go close because once it is a wire and it carries current, there is magnetic field around it, we can attract pool. Object. So when the object is lighter, it can drag stuff closer. Especially if you have that magnetic uh, metallic thing around you, it can pull you along. And so whenever you have a conductor and it carries current, this is a wire. So long as there is current flowing through the wire, Automatically, there is magnetic field around it. There is magnetic field lines around it. Okay. So when the when the magnetic um, the current through it flows in this direction, I, you have this. lines around it. Now, if you want to increase the magnetism, magnetic field lines, field lines, meaning it has become a magnet. If you want to increase the magnetism around a car, a, a current carrying conductor, a conductor that carries current, you coil it into a solenoid, into the same conductor, you can pick it and coil it. The same, the same wire, you coil it and then pass current through it by indicating a source of battery or EMF, current will go through. The moment you coil it and then you connect it to a source of EMF. There is, you concentrate the magnetic field line around it. I said, what can boom? You concentrate it. So this thing will behave as a, a bar magnet with north pole to the positive terminal and then south pole and the negative terminal. I said, You've created a, a, um, a temporal magnet. Temporal magnet.
This is a temporal magnet and this is a permanent magnet. This is temporal because if I create a key in the circuit, whenever I close the key, the magnetic effect is on, comes on. So by closing the key, magnet itself, what's your line? You create the magnetic effect is on. By opening the key, the magnetic effect is off. So we can control this magnetism. Over here, we cannot control. It is always present. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Yes, please. So, yes, please. This is temporal because we can on and off the magnetic e effect around it. This is permanent because it is always there. This is also temporal because when I decide to change the polarity, the potential, okay, this is the positive, this is the negative. Let me bring the negative here. Let me bring and show, I show bring the positive here. I have changed polarity, negative, positive. The moment you do that, the pole of the magnet will also change. Okay, south will come here and north will come here. So for a temporal magnet, the magnetic field around can be controlled, be on and, and then off too. Its polarity, poles, can also be switched. But for a permanent magnet, it is always there. The, the poles, uh, the, the polarity is always the same as it was designed. This is the difference between permanent magnet and then temporal magnet. So the moving coil meters, when are the, the galvanometer, the voltmeter, the ammeter, all operate on the principle of electromagnetism. Okay, they operate on the principle of electromagnetism. And electromagnetism is the wow. Hello.